I want to share my story because I want people to understand just how devastating it is when something like this happens. It completely ruined my life uh, to that point. And, you know, there have been some good things that have happened since, but I don't want anyone to have to go through the sort of suffering and pain that my family's gone through. So I, I want a chance to share my story. Katie was killed October 6th, 2017. You know, she was 37 years old. She was a young mom with twins that weren't even two months old. They'd never been home. They were still in the NICU in UCLA. She was on her way back from the hospital. And that, that was the irony, right? So to, to understand what happened that night, you, you need to understand that the girls were in the NICU for a long period of time. And Katie was going down and visiting them every single day. She'd read studies that showed that if the mom was there present in the NICU with the girls, that uh, they would do better, they would heal better. Um, and she, she called me around 11. She was a little frustrated with some of the things going on with the girls and I told her, look, you're really tired. We've been going through a lot. Uh, why, don't you just, why don't you just come home and uh, you know, we, can, we can deal with this tomorrow. When she hadn't, uh, she hadn't gotten home by midnight, uh, I called her and you know, there's no answer, didn't ring. By, by about 2.30, I uh, woke up my my son and told him I was going to be back in a little bit, not to worry if he woke up and I wasn't there. And I decided to retrace my steps. And there's only a mile from the house where they had the whole road uh, taped off. And uh, you know, they wouldn't let me through. I asked what had happened. Uh, they confirmed that uh, there had been a car accident. And um, uh, they wouldn't tell it to me straight. But uh, and I was able to put all the pieces together and figure out that, uh, unfortunately, that, that was her right there a mile from her house. Uh, killed by a drunk driver. So that's you know, 2.30 2 in the morning, and um, you know, I went home. I wasn't gonna sleep, obviously. And I just thought, what am I gonna tell the kids? You know, part of me wanted to wake them up and let them know, but I thought, no, let's let them have one last good night of sleep. Uh, friends came over, they were there. In the middle of the night, no problem. You know, they stayed with me and uh, I made a nice breakfast for the kids and, and started to call family members and let them know that, that you know, Katie wasn't, wasn't coming home. Um, the coroner came finally at 5.30. It took him a long time because they couldn't positively identify the body. It had been so mangled in the accident. Um, they never even let me see the body. It was... Uh, So when her father got up and gave his statement uh, before I did mine in that, that courtroom with, uh, with the Cena family there, uh, you know, he, he talked about Katie and how he knew that Katie loved her, the driver of that car. And he said, you may wonder how I know that. The answer is because Katie loved everyone. And uh, you know, that's just who she was. Uh, she cared about everyone. She loved everyone. She was kind to everyone. and. Uh, you know, so it's, it's a tragic loss, you know, that uh, in, a, in a world where there's, there's so much um, uh, intolerance and, and so much frustration and anger uh, that someone who, who loved so much, so unconditionally and so freely uh, isn't here anymore. It's how you handle adversity that defines you more than anything else. It's easy to be pleasant and, and happy when life is good, but it's when you, uh, when you face adversity that you learn what you're really made of, and it gives you an opportunity to grow and, and become something better than what you were yesterday. So you know, regardless of uh, whether you know, it's drunk driving or something else, you know, I just I want the kids to commit to when they do run into adversity in their lives, I want you guys to 
uh, commit that you're going to handle it the right way, that you're going to become a better person for it, and that you're going to try and make the world a better place. Because if you'll do that, you're going to heal better, and the world around you will heal better, and ultimately, you'll be a lot happier. Alcohol is everybody's business. You know, don't let your friends drink and drive. Don't let somebody leave a party drunk um, because you never know. It might be someone you know. Uh, its life is impacted forever. It's everybody's business. Have a plan. Don't drink and drive. Don't mess up anybody else's life any more than it's already messed up.